Hello everyone, and welcome to Ultimate Fanfiction, so we are back with an interesting series on what if Naruto had the power of three-tailed beasts, Kyubi sealed inside. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. Explosions went off all around the village hidden in the leaves, also known as Konoha. The cause of these explosions would be the ninja of the village fighting against the nine-tailed demon fox. The four Hokage was in the middle of finishing preparations to reseal the large fox inside his newborn son, Naruto Uzumaki. He didn't want to have to do this to his son, to place such a burden on him so early in life but only in Uzumaki could contain the Kayubi and he knew the Kayubi would help his boy later in life. He finished the seal and got the altar ready for his son, before flashing away to collect his son and wife. Demon Realm a large snow white wolf with silver eyes came running into a large room where her master was located. Her master had long silver hair that reached down to her lower back and royal blue eyes. She had a light blue kimono on that showed off the top part of her impressive D cup breasts. The wolf walked over and bowed its head before speaking. Hoshimi sama, I have urgent news. The patrol you have watching over Konoha and Kurumi sama has reported that she has started attacking the village. They do not know why but she seems to be under some sort of mind control, the wolf reported. Worry flashed through the woman's eyes before she replied. Manraito, Moonlight, go and gather Haisai and Hikari at once, tell them they are needed here immediately. Hoshimi ordered before the wolf bowed again and left. A few minutes later and two more women walked through the door. The first woman had black hair that reached just below her shoulders and emerald green eyes. She was dressed in a white kimono with a black dragon across the back of it and showed off a small portion of her C cup breasts. The other woman had brown hair that reached down just past her knees and brown eyes. She had on a planned pink kimono that completely covered her body and A cup breasts. What do you need, Hoshimi? asked the second woman. It appears that there is trouble in Konoha and it is being caused by Kurumi, Hikari. The patrols I had around the village said she just started attacking and seems to be under some sort of mind control. Hoshimi explained. When do we leave? asked the first woman. Immediately Haisai. Hoshimi said before her body started to change shape. A few seconds later and in the place of the woman was now a large eleven-tailed silver wolf with blue eyes. Hikari and Haisai also started to change shape. In Emily's spot was now a thirteen-tailed brown rabbit with brown eyes. Valerie had changed into a large twelve-tailed dragon with black scales covering her body and emerald green eyes. They watched at Hoshimi opened a portal before following her through. Konoha. Are you sure this is the only option Minato-kun? Asked a beautiful red-haired woman. This was Kashina Uzumaki, Naruto's mother. I'm afraid so Kashina-chan. I don't want to do this either but you know just as well as I do that he is the only one capable of holding back Kurumi. Minato said deeply wishing there was another way instead of resealing the fox into his little boy. We are far enough away from Konoha that I will be able to do this without interruption. As soon as my clone and Gamabunta get the fox here, I will seal her in Naruto-kun. A few seconds later and there was a flash of light before two loud thuds were heard. As soon as the Kayubi saw what was happening, she quickly lashed out as the baby. Minato and Kashina saw this and jumped in front of their son to save him. Kashina's chain wrapped around the fox holding it in place as her and Minato said their final words to Naruto. They were so focused on Naruto that they failed to notice the three new tailed beasts step out of the portal. Minato made a few hand signs as the Shinigami appeared behind him. I offer myself and my wife in order for you to seal the Kyubi and the demon chakra inside of my son, Minato said with a pained voice. The Shinigami nodded as its hand passed through Minato and Kashina's bodies. The Shinigami could see the fox, but it could also feel three other demon chakra signatures nearby. And since Minato was unaware of this three new beings at the time, the Shinigami's hand split into four parts before three of them started to stretch out towards the chakra. Before the three-tailed beast knew what happened, their soul and chakra was being pulled from their body and sealed into the newborn. Minato and Kashina said goodbye to their son one final time before the life left their bodies. The retired third Hokage arrived at the scene moments later, and instantly knew what had happened. Gently picking up the crying baby. He made his way back to the village. Inside the seal, the four tailed beast slowly started to wake up. They looked around and noticed they were each behind their own set of gates. It looks like we will be sticking around for a while. May as well discuss what we should do until we can communicate with the boy. 
Hikari said as she started to shrink back to her human form. The Kyubi also started to shrink as well. In place of where the fox once was, now was a red-haired woman with golden eyes. She had on a white kimono with an image of her nine-tailed fox form on the back with her tails out behind her. The kimono showed off the top portion of her B almost C cup breasts. I guess I should explain what happened. Kurumi said as tears built up in her eyes. Five years later, it had been five years since the Kyubi had attacked the village. Hirazen Serutobi had taken back up the title of Hokage after that night. Hirazen was currently sitting in his office hoping that surrogate grandson would be okay tonight. It was October 10th, Naruto's birthday and also the day of the Kyubi festival. Not everyone in the village hated Naruto. Half of the village didn't really care in the first place, they just saw him as any other kid. 25% of them actually saw Naruto as the hero he was for holding back the Kyubi and the other 25% were those that actually did hate and despise him. Naruto was currently sitting on top of the Yandaimi Hokage's head on the Hokage monument. This was the one place where he went when he just wanted time alone to himself. He was sitting here looking out over the village as they enjoyed the festival. He would have liked to been there enjoying it too, but if one of the drunken people saw him that hated him, it was just get bad. He heard footsteps behind him and jumped up and spun around to see a few drunken civilians. Naruto was a lot smarter than most five-year-olds. He watched the older ninja practice and learned to do it himself. He wasn't the best at it, but at least he could defend himself against a drunk civilian. There were five civilians standing between him and the stairs that led down from the monument. Normally this wouldn't be a problem, however this time, the civilians had weapons. Glass bottles, wooden boards, and one even had a metal pipe. The five civilians moved toward the young blonde the best they could in their drunken state. They started swinging at Naruto and managed to land a few hits on his small body. Naruto managed to dodge most of the strikes but still ended up with a few cuts and bruises. His small body was getting tired and he needed to get away from the civilians. He started to run past the civilians and managed to get past the first four. The last one swung aboard and knocked him back to his starting point. I need to get out of here. I don't have much energy left. Naruto thought to himself. A moment later he felt a small burning sensation in his eyes. Everything started slowing down for the small blonde as if he started seeing things in slow motion. He started running forward again and this time he was able to see the strikes coming and avoided each one. He kept running and stopped for a moment to catch his breath in an alleyway. He started to move again only to fall to his stomach unconscious. Two Anbu appeared from the shadows, one with a dog mask and one with a cat mask. Go and get Hokage Sama Neko. I'm taking Naruto to the hospital, said Inu. Hi Senpei. Neko replied before vanishing in a swirl of leaves. Mindscape. Naruto woke to the sounds of dripping water to find himself in a large open room. In this room were four large cages with a piece of paper on each of the gates. Naruto looked around trying to figure out where he was as he had never seen this part of Konoha before. Where am I? Naruto asked out loud. We are in your mindscape Naruto-kun came a loud feminine voice from inside one of the cages. Who's there? Naruto asked with a bit of worry in his voice. He had no clue where he was at or who was speaking to him. Calm down Kit, we will not harm you. Naruto heard another voice say. He looked toward the direction of the voice and saw the large demon fox. Behind the other three gates, the dragon, rabbit and wolf all revealed themselves as well. The four demons started to shrink into their human forms. When Naruto saw each woman, he couldn't help but think that each one was a very beautiful woman. Who are you? Naruto asked. The four demons were unsure if they should tell Naruto the truth so early but felt that he had the right to know. They explained what happened on the night of his birth and how they became sealed inside him. The four-tailed beast told the blonde who his parents were but made him promise not to tell anyone other than his Hokage that he knew due to his parents having many enemies. The blonde had tears streaming down his face from learning of everything but didn't blame Kurumi since she was being controlled by someone else. As he was staring at the floor that was covered in water, he noticed something different about his eyes. His eyes were no longer the dark blue he was used to. Now they were a light sky blue and his pupils were now white and shaped differently. Think Madara's Mangekio Sharingan with white pupils and a blue background instead of the normal red and black. What's wrong with my eyes? Naruto asked as he looked at the four women that were with him. They all looked at the young blonde for a few minutes before Hoshimi spoke up. It seems you have unlocked a bloodline Naruto-kun. 
I have only heard about this bloodline being unlocked once in history. It is known as the Sora Sharingan. It was said to have the same abilities as the Sharingan but instead of using the emotions of the wielder, it uses the user's will. Can any of you teach me how to use it? Naruto asked. I'm afraid not Kit, but there is someone who might be able to. Her name is Makoto Uchiha and she was your mother's best friend. You could ask her and see if she can help you since she has a Sharingan. Kurumi replied getting a nod from Naruto. We want to help train you and make you stronger Naruto-kun. We each can give you some abilities that can help you get stronger, but it will take time to learn and master them all. Take some time to think about it and let us know in a few days okay. Haisai said once again getting a nod from the blonde. How do I get back in here? Naruto asked. It's your mind Naruto-kun. All you have to do is close your eyes and picture yourself in here with us. Although we can communicate without you being in here if you remove just a small portion of the seal from our cages. Hikari said as Naruto tore off a small corner from each seal. You are starting to wake up in the real world Naruto so stop the flow of chakra to your eyes for a moment and they will deactivate. Hoshimi said as Naruto followed her instructions and turned off his Sora Sharingan as he started to fade away. Real world. Naruto slowly woke up to the sound of beeping. He looked around and noticed he was hooked up to a couple monitors and he was in a hospital gown. He also saw his Gigi, the third Hokage sitting in a chair and reading an orange book. What are you doing here Gigi? Naruto asked with a yawn. Hiruzen looked up from his book with a smile before closing it and putting it away. I was told you were in the hospital and wanted to come and make sure you were alright Naruto-kun. I'm fine Gigi. Just a few small cuts and bruises. Can we talk alone for a minute Gigi? Naruto asked getting a nod from the cage as he made a single hand signs and the anbu vanished. What do you need to talk about Naruto-kun? Hiruzen asked with a smile. Naruto proceeded to tell his grandfather what had happened while he was out and how he had unlocked his version of the Sharingan. He told him that he learned who his father and mother was and how Kurumi was controlled during the attack. Hiruzen was shocked to learn of this and especially that there was someone out there that could control the biju. Kashina had talked to him about how she befriended the large demon fox and how she wasn't as evil as everyone made her out to be. So you not only have the Kayubi sealed inside you, but you have a wolf, dragon, and rabbit as well. Hiruzen said with a shake of his head. I was planning on training you once you got a bit older but it would seem I may have to start sooner than planned. Since I wasn't able to see you today for your birthday, how about you come with me tomorrow? My student Jiraiya and I have to go to Suna tomorrow to talk to the case cage. Would you like to come and we can talk to Makoto and start your training once we get back? I would like that Gigi. Naruto said as he jumped and hugged the elderly cage. Alright. Well you get some rest and I will pick you up tomorrow. Good night Naruto-kun. Hiruzen said as he left. How much longer until we get there Gigi? Naruto asked the elderly cage for what seemed to be the thousandth time today. Hiruzen and Naruto had left the leaf village three days ago and were headed to the hidden sand village, Sanagakure. Jiraiya had stayed behind in order to do his research but promised to be in Suna on time. When you could summon giant toads who could cover miles in a single leap, what was the point in getting in a hurry? If the cage, Naruto and his small group of Anbu bodyguards were traveling at a ninja's speed, they would have already been in Suna. We are almost there Naruto, look. Hiruzen said pointing at the large walls in the distance. Those are the walls that surround and help protect Suna. We will be there shortly. Naruto calmed down a bit after that as he watched the walls of Suna get closer and closer. As the carriage passed the walls, Naruto watched as each of the Suna ninja bowed in the Hokage's direction. Gigi. How come those ninja are bowing to you when you aren't their cage? Naruto asked. It is always polite to bow to the cages Naruto-kun. Unless they tell you otherwise, should always bow before any of the cages whether in your village or any of the other village across the elemental nations. Hiruzen said as the carriage stopped in front of a large building. The cage and the young blonde made their way up the stairs to the top floor of the building. There was a young woman sitting behind a desk doing paperwork. She had long blonde hair, blue eyes, and was wearing a gray skirt with matching shirt. Hello Mocha-san, is Case Cage sama in? Hiruzen asked. Hello Hokage-sama. Mocha said as she stood and bowed. Just one moment and I'll check. She walked around her desk and knocked on the large door to the cage's office. After being given permission to enter, she opened the door and bowed before her leader. Sir, the Hokage is here to see you. Send him in and please bring in some tea. 
replied the case cage as Mocha held the door for Hiruzen and Naruto to enter before she left to get the tea. Naruto looked at the older man as he entered the room. He had auburn hair and dark eyes. He had a loose green fitting kimono with a white color and his cage hat was sitting on his desk. Rasa looked at the young blonde for a few moments and noticed that he looked a lot like the fourth Hokage. Good afternoon, Kei's Cage Sama, Hiruzen said as he and Naruto bowed. Please, no need for that. I hear that enough from my villagers. Rasa is just fine. Who is the young one you brought with you? Rasa asked. Naruto Uzumaki, Rasa Sama, Naruto said with another bow trying to be as polite as possible. Hiruzen started to sit move to sit down but stopped when Naruto spoke. Gigi, may I go outside while you're busy? Naruto asked. There is a small park just outside the tower that he can play in if it is alright with you, Rasa said. Go ahead Naruto-kun, but be careful okay? I don't need you getting hurt, Hiruzen said as Naruto left the room. So is he Minato and Kashina's boy? He looks a lot like Minato except for the whisker marks, Rasa asked. Yes, he is their son and our own Jinchuriki. Jiraiya should be here soon and we can take a look at the seal on your daughter. Hiruzen said getting a nod from Rasa. XXX Naruto walked out of the cage tower and headed for the park. He entered the park and saw a small group of kids playing ball. He started to go and ask if he could join but stopped when he saw someone else walking up. The person was a girl with red hair that reached just past her shoulders. She stood at just a couple inches shorter than himself. Her eyes were a light blue-green in color and she was wearing a red tank top with the Suna symbol on the back, black shorts, and brown sandals. To Naruto, she was one of the most beautiful girls he had seen. Naruto watched as she walked up to the kids and asked them if she could play. The kids stopped playing with the ball and turned to look at the young girl before they all took off running from her. The young girl walked over to the swings and sat down and slowly started swinging. Naruto saw the look in her eyes, it was the same look he had of wanting to be loved and accepted. Why do they treat her like that? Naruto thought to himself. She is like you Kit. She holds my youngest brother Shukaku, the one-tailed Tanuki. Go and talk with her, I'm sure she could use a friend who knows what she is going through. Kurumi said through the mental link getting a nod from Naruto. Naruto picked up the ball that the kids were playing with and walked towards the young girl. He placed the ball on the ground and rolled it over to her as she stopped swinging and looked up at Naruto. Hi, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Want to play? Naruto asked. My name is Gaia. Are you not going to run away like the others? Gaia asked hoping he wasn't like the other kids even though she had never seen him around before. I know what it feels like to be alone. I wouldn't wish that on anyone Gaia-chan. I'm also not afraid of what is sealed within you. Naruto said getting a wide-eyed look from the young girl. How do you know about Shukaku? Gaia asked. I have four tailed beasts sealed within me Gaia Chan. I hold the 9, 11, 12, and 13 tailed beasts. Naruto replied. He's not lying, little one, I can sense the other four within him. A deep voice spoke in Gaia's mind. How do I know he won't just try to hurt me? Gaia asked mentally. He is already pretty close to you, Gaia. If he was a danger to you, your sand would already have stopped him. Just give him a chance Gaia," replied the Tanuki getting a mental nod from Gaia. Gaia picked up the ball and gave Naruto a small smile as the two began to play. About an hour later and two other kids joined them. Gaia introduced them as her older siblings and they were both happy that Gaia had finally found her a friend. The four continued to play until an Anbu appeared next to them. Please come with me children. Case Cage Sama and Hokage Sama has asked that you all return to the cage tower at once. The Anbu said as he led the four children back to the tower. Once the four kids made it back to the cage's office, they entered to find a third man with the two cages. Naruto recognized the man from the stories that Hiruzen would tell him of his days of teaching Genin. This man was Jiraiya and one of the three legendary Sanin. Rasa looked to his three kids and spoke. This is Jiraiya of the Sanin and seal master of Konoha. He is here to make sure that your seal is working properly Gaia. Rasa explained. Just come here and show me your seal and I will look it over real quick and make sure nothing is wrong. Jiraiya said getting a nod from the young redhead. Gaia walked over and stood in front of the tall man and lifted her shirt just over her stomach. She channeled a little bit of chakra into the seal causing it to appear so the Sanin could do his job. After about 10 minutes of checking the seal, 
he stood and nodded his head. Everything looks fine with the seal case cage sama. If you ever happen to notice anything that looks wrong with it just be sure to let sensei know and I will return to check it. Thank you Jiraiya san. You kids may leave now. Be sure to be home by 8 for dinner tonight and bring Naruto along since he and the Hokage will be staying with us for a couple of days, Rasa said. Hi to san. The three san siblings said before the four kids left the office. Rasa stood and walked over to the window overlooking his village and watched as his kids played with the son of one of his closest friends. Hirazan, did we ever find a way to finalize the alliance agreement between our villages? Rasa asked. We have thought of a few ideas but nothing has been approved as of yet. Why do you ask? Hirazan replied with curiosity. What about a marriage contract between Naruto and my youngest Gaia? Rasa asked. Are you sure about that Rasa? Naruto is the last of the Uzumaki clan and if he decides to rebuild his clan, then he will need more than one wife in the future, Hirazan said. I am sure Hirazan, it will show that out villages fully trust in each other by doing it this way. And I am well aware of what it takes to rebuild a clan. We can start explaining this to each of them over the next few years and once they both become genin we can explain about the marriage contract. Rasa replied as he watched his kids play with Naruto. Hirazan walked over next to the K's cage and watched the young kids as a smile came to his face. Very well Rasa. Have it wrote it up and send it to Konoha once it is finished. XXX The next few days went by fast for Naruto as he spent them with Gaia, Tamari, and Konkuro. He now stood with Hirazan outside the K's cage tower along with Rasa and the Sand siblings. He was upset that their visit had to end so early and that he was leaving three new friends behind. Gaia wasn't doing much better as her only friend outside of her family and Shukaku was leaving and she wasn't sure when she would see him again. Would it be alright if I write to you Naruto-kun? Gaia asked as she hugged the blonde. I would like that Gaia-chan. Gigi is gonna start training me once we get back to Konoha along with someone else but won't tell me who, so I will write back as soon as I get time. Naruto replied giving the young redhead a fox-like smile causing her to blush. Come on along Naruto-kun. We must be getting back to Konoha. Hirazan said as he climbed into the carriage. Bye guys, I hope I get to see you all soon. Naruto replied as he climbed in after his Gigi before the carriage took off. Naruto-kun, can I ask you a question? Asked the cage. Go ahead Gigi. Naruto replied. Since you know of the Uzumaki clan, do you wish to rebuild it? Hirazan asked waiting for the boy's answer. I would like to one day. Why do you ask? Naruto asked curious as to why this was being brought up. If the last living member of a clan is a male, he usually takes multiple wives to help rebuild his clan. I just thought you should know this for if you decide to rebuild the Uzumaki clan. Hirazan explained as Naruto thought over what he was told. XXX three days later and Naruto and Hirazan returned to the hidden leaf village. The carriage stopped in front of the cage tower and the two got out. As Naruto started to walk away, he heard a voice in his head. Come and claim us master. A quiet feminine voice said. Naruto looked around for a minute before speaking to his tenants. Did you all say or hear something? We didn't say anything Naruto-kun and we didn't hear anything either. Hoshimi replied. Naruto shrugged his shoulders and started to walk away when he heard another voice. We are here to serve you young Uzumaki. Follow our voices and come to us. This time the voice was a deep male voice. Hirazan was watching the young blonde with a bit of confusion. What is it Naruto-kun? I keep hearing these two voices and they are telling me to come and find them and that they are here to serve me. Naruto said before he walked into the cage tower followed by Hirazan. Can he really hear both of the blades? Even Kashina and Minato could only control one of them. Hirazan thought to himself as he followed Naruto down towards the basement. Naruto stopped at a wall and tried to find a way through it. Hirazan made a few hand signs and the wall disappeared to reveal a large metal door. Naruto started following the voices once again and walked into the room. The young boy stopped walking for a minute and began to look around. His gaze landed on two blades that were handing on the wall side by side. The first blade was made from pitch black metal, the hilt was covered in red and black cloth, and it had a short chain with a broken link at the end. The second blade was a sleek, medium sized blade. The hilt's grip, which has a gentle black decorative wrapping, bends forward at the end, with a pommel shaped overlap three times, and a crimson tassel dangling from its base. Instead of a suba, there is a U-shape guard covering three inches of blade, 
with a flower petal design. At the base of the guard is a red string wrapped thrice around the hilt, with a three loop bow on the backside and a folded paper decoration on the front side. The blade's hammon is straight, colored black with a silver edge. Hiruzen watched as Naruto walked towards the blades in an almost trance like state. Naruto stepped up to the blades and placed one hand on the hilt of each blade. Suddenly everything went black. A few moments later and Naruto appeared in an open grassy plain. He looked around trying to figure out where he was when he saw two people standing side by side. Who are you two? Naruto asked as he stared at the people. The first was a female standing about 5 foot 5. She had long red hair, dark crimson eyes, and was wearing a red kimono that showed off a small portion of cleavage. The second was a man standing at about 6 foot tall and his skin was white. He was wearing a white trench-like coat, had white hair, and what looked to be part of a black mosque's remains with one horn covering a glowing yellow eye. His other eye was an ice blue. My name is Benihime and this is Tensa Zanjetsu. We are spirits that reside within the two blades that you now own. I belong to your mother and Zanjetsu here was your father's. This is the first time that I have ever allowed a male to wield my blade so do not make me regret make decision master. Benihime spoke getting a nod of agreement from Zanjetsu. Naruto was surrounded by blackness again but it soon disappeared and he was standing in front of the two blades once again. Naruto took the two blades and placed them in their sheaths that appeared below the blades before turning to the Hokage. The blades have chosen me as their new master Gigi. Naruto said with a happy smile. Come on Naruto-kun. It seems you will need more training than I thought in order to master your Sharingan and the blades. Let's go and contact the person who will hopefully become your tutor. Hiruzen said as he led Naruto out of the vault. It had been six months since Naruto had returned from Suna with Hiruzen. During that time he had met two people who had become precious people for him. The first was Satsuki Uchiha, friend and rival of the young blonde. The second was Makoto Uchiha, mother to Satsuki and his current sensei on using his Sharingan. During the six months, he had developed a small rivalry with Satsuki as she trained along with him. Naruto was happy he made two new friends and enjoyed listening to Makoto tell him stories of his mother and father. He also trained with the four-tailed beasts that was sealed within him to better be able to use their powers along with training with his two swords. It was slow progress right now but the four had told him he would get better in time. He also spent his free time reading letters that Gaia sent him and writing back to her when he could. Naruto was currently on his way to the Uchiha compound to spend some time with Satsuki and Makoto. As Naruto came to the compound, he noticed none of the guards that usually guarded the gates were there. Not paying it much attention he opened the gate and headed for Makoto's home. As Naruto rounded the first corner, he stopped dead in his tracks. Lying in the streets of the Uchiha district were the bodies of the Uchiha clan. Naruto was instantly worried about Satsuki and Makoto that he took off running for their house. Please be okay. Naruto thought as he continued to run. They are still alive kit along with most of the bodies scattered through the streets. It seems as if they were knocked out for some reason. Kurumi replied to the young blonde. Naruto finally made it to Makoto's house and quickly ran inside. He didn't see anyone downstairs so he made his way upstairs to Makoto's bedroom. He could hear voices coming from the bedroom and ran in throwing the door open. He saw Makoto and Satsuki sitting against a wall as a taller figure stood in front of them. Not wanting his friends to get hurt, Naruto charged at the person. The three other people in the room saw Naruto and the one standing side stepped the charging blonde while sticking his foot out causing Naruto to trip and fall into Makoto's arms. Naruto looked up at the person before his eyes widened at who it was. Why did you do this Nisan? Why did you kill members of the clan? Satsuki shouted at her older brother. I am sorry Aimoto, I had to do this. You will understand when you are older. Itachi replied as he started to walk away. Makoto watched as her oldest child walked towards the door unable to do anything. She had an idea as to why Itachi did what he did, but she had no proof to back it up. I will hunt you down. No matter where you go or where you hide I will find you and I will kill you, Satsuki shouted as Itachi turned to look at her. Itachi looked at his little sister with a blank stare. On the inside he was proud that his sister had managed to unlock not just the Sharingan, but the Sora Sharingan just like Naruto. He just wished that this wasn't the way that she had unlocked the dujutsu. Train them both well Ka-chan. Itachi replied before he vanished in a flock of crows. 
XXX it had been 10 years since the night Itachi killed part of his clan and left the village. Naruto and Satsuki both wanted to hunt him down and figure out why he had done it but was immediately stopped by Makoto. Satsuki always tried to get her mother to find a way to find Itachi and make him pay for what he did. She was so full of rage that Naruto and Makoto both thought she may snap one day but luckily Naruto was able to rid her of that. She still wanted to find her brother, but knew it would all come in time. Naruto sat in the academy class for his final day of being in the class. Today was the day for the Genin hopefuls to take their test to see if they had what it took to become Genin. He sat next to three of his friends that he had made during the years of being in the academy. The first was Sasuke Uchiha, only known to a small few to be Satsuki Uchiha. She thought going to the academy as a male would draw less attention to her, but oh how she was wrong. She had to run all the way to her house to avoid the fangirls that were, so deeply in love with Sasuke. Satsuki had grown to stand at 5 foot and 5 inches. Her black hair had grown out to about mid-back and she had developed a rather nice figure with curves in all the right places and low C-cup breasts. She wore a light blue shirt with the Uchiha symbol on the back, a black skirt with black shorts underneath, and a pair of ninja sandals when she wasn't in her henge as Sasuke. You all know what Sasuke looks like so I ain't going to bother with him. The next was Hanada Hayuga who stood at 5 foot and 3 inches. Naruto had met her about a year after he started his training with Makoto and Satsuki. He had protected her from some bullies who were harassing her and even helped her with her confidence issues. In Naruto's opinion, Hanada was a very beautiful young woman. She had dark blue hair that stopped just below her shoulders and pale lavender eyes. She had a figure that a lot of girls would kill for with fair blemish-free skin, impressive D-cup breast, and curves just like Satsuki. Hanada wore a loose-fitting, lavender and cream-hooded jacket with lavender cuffs over mesh armor under a cream-colored shirt with navy blue pants and black, low-heeled sandals. The final member of their little group was Ino Yamanaka who stood at 5 foot and 5 inches. Naruto had met Ino around the age of 9 when they first entered the academy. She seemed a little nervous at first and Naruto thought she could use a friend to talk to. He had quickly became one of her closest friends outside of Shikamaru Nara and Choji Akamichi who were like brothers to her since their clans shared a close bond. Ino had long blonde hair that stopped at her hips and light blue eyes. She had a curvy figure with C-cup breast. Ino wore a short, purple, sleeveless blouse, an open front purple apron skirt over a shorter, black skirt, with short, mesh shorts underneath and mesh elbow covers. Naruto had grown to stand at a height of 5 foot and 10 inches and he had short, spiky blonde hair. He now wore black anbu pants with a pouch for his shuriken and kanai on his right leg. He had a black t-shirt with an orange uzumaki swirl on the back and mesh armor underneath. He wore the normal ninja sandals and had his two swords sealed away in a seal on his arm. Over the last six years of being in the academy, Naruto had taken on the role of dead last with only a limited few knowing the truth about his skill. Hiruzen had let it slip once before that the worst and best of the class would be on the same team. Since Satsuki was already at the top of the class, he settled for hiding his skill and becoming the class Dobi, in order to be paired with Satsuki when the time came for team assignment. Naruto sat there waiting for his two sensei to come in and start the class. A few moments later and Aruka and Mizuki walked in and began the day. All right class, you have made it through the last six years of my boring lectures, he said as he heard a few chuckles, and today you all take your test to see which of you become Genin. Please follow us outside and we will begin your testing, Aruka said as the class followed him and Mizuki outside. XXX Naruto stood outside the academy with Ino and Hanada as they watched, Sasuke, take his test. Hanada and Ino had both already passed their test and were now waiting for Sasuke and Naruto to finish up theirs. As they watched, Sasuke, test, Hanada turned to Naruto before speaking. Since this is the last day of the academy, are you going to show them what you can do Naruto-kun? Hanada asked the blonde. Yeah and I can't wait to see the look on their faces, Naruto said before Aruka called his name for his test. Naruto walked over to stand in front of Aruka as, Sasuke, stood with Ino and Hanada. Alright Naruto, we need you to do the henge, the kawarimi, and the clone jutsu please. Aruka said as the blonde nodded. Naruto placed his hands together and focused his chakra for the henge jutsu. In a poof of smoke Naruto was replaced with an exact copy of his father that he had seen from pictures. 
Naruto released the Henge then used the Kawarimi to replace himself with Iruka before switching back. As Naruto started to do the clone jutsu, he heard Kiba speak up. Try not to make this clone look too pathetic Naruto. Kiba said getting a few chuckles from a few of the other kids. Naruto just smirked as he placed his fingers together in a cross formation. Shadow Clone Jutsu Naruto said as the area was filled with a hundred copies of the blonde as everyone looked on in shock except for Hanada, Ino, and Sasuke. This is incredible Naruto. Aruka said as he looked at the clones. What's so great about this? He just actually managed to make some clones this time. Kiba said as Aruka turned to him. The Shadow Clone Jutsu is a B-rank Kenjutsu that was created by the second Hokage. Aruka said as everyone had shocked looks on their face. The Shadow Clone Jutsu splits the user's chakra evenly and makes actual clones instead of illusions like the Clone Jutsu. The Shadow Clones can use Jutsu, think, and act on their own just as well as the original can. Even Jonin that have trained for years can only manage about 20 clones max. Seeing that Naruto here made close to a hundred as an incredible feat all on its own. Aruka finished. If it's a Kinjutsu, then how did Naruto learn it? Sakura asked. The Hokage allowed me to learn it. The Uzumaki clan were known for their large chakra reserves among other things. I have too much chakra to be able to do the clone jutsu so he allowed me to learn the shadow clone. Naruto explained as the clones dispelled. Alright Naruto. Survive in the circle for three minutes or if you can, knock Mizuki out of the ring. Taijutsu, ninjutsu and genjutsu is acceptable as long as it doesn't harm anyone majorly. Aruka explained as Naruto nodded and stepped into the circle with Mizuki. Begin. Mizuki launched forward and swung at Naruto who ducked under the punch and tried to sweep Mizuki's legs out from under him. The chunin jumped over the blonde and went to kick him in the back of the head. Naruto quickly brought his arms up and blocked the kick but was still pushed back a few feet. Mizuki rushed forward once again as Naruto held a hand behind his back and gathered his wind chakra in it. As Mizuki went to punch the blonde, Naruto side stepped the punch before pushing his hand forward. Gale Beast Palm Naruto shouted as a large claw made of wind and chakra hit Mizuki's chest and launched him back out of the circle. An excellent job Naruto. Aruka said as he tossed the blonde a headband. Just then a cat-masked Anbu landed in front of Naruto. The Hokage would like to see you Naruto-kun, the Anbu said. Tell him I'll be right there Neko-chan. Naruto replied as the Anbu disappeared. Naruto then looked to his three friends. I'll see you guys later, Naruto said before he too vanished in a shunshin. XXX Naruto appeared inside Hiruzen's office. Hey Gigi, what d? Naruto started to say before he was cut off. Naruto kun. Someone shouted before tackling the blonde in a hug and almost knocking him over. After the person stepped back, Naruto saw that it was his first friend he ever made, Gaia Sabaku. She stood at about 5 foot and 4 inches. Her crimson hair had grown out and now reached down to her waist. Her figure had developed nicely with C cup breast and a slender body. She now had on a black shirt that showed off the top part of her breasts, a crimson skirt that reached just above her knees a pair of ninja sandals, and a gourd on her back. It's good to see you again Gaia-chan, Naruto said before he noticed the three people standing behind Gaia. Konkuro and Tamari stood with their father Rasa watching the two. It's good to see you all as well, Naruto said as he bowed to Rasa. There's no need for that Naruto. I get enough of that back at the village, Rasa said. What did you need me for Gigi? Naruto asked as he turned to his grandfather figure. Rasa and I needed to speak with you concerning something that we discussed when I first took you to Suna," Hiruzen said as Rasa took over. I have talked with Gaia about what it takes for a male to revive his clan and how the male may have to take more than one wife. When you and Hiruzen came to Suna all those years ago, Hiruzen and I were trying to find a way to show the alliance between our villages. We finally came to a solution that involves you and Gaia-chan," Rasa said getting confused looks from the blonde and red head. What does this have to do with this too San? Gaia asked. Hiruzen and I had a marriage contract wrote up that would take a member of my village and a member of Hiruzen's and unite them in marriage to show the alliance of our villages. The two people that we chose was you and Naruto. Rasa explained getting shocked looks from the two but both had a small blush. We know this is sudden that this is why we have been talking with each of you up until this point. We won't force you to just accept this, we will give you a chance and see if this is something you too can accept. 
Hiruzen said. So this is why you always talk to me about what it took to rebuild a clan. Just in case Naruto-kun and I go through with the marriage contract and he does take more than one wife. Gaia said getting a nod from Rasa. Naruto spoke up next surprising them all. I don't know if it will work or not Gigi but I don't mind trying. Naruto said getting small smiles from the two cage and a deep red blush from Gaia. We will be here for a couple days as Hiruzen and I have a few things that need to be discussed. We can talk more on this later. Rasa said getting nods from the kids. You better head on back to the academy Naruto-kun. Hiruzen said getting a nod from the blonde who disappeared in a shunshin. Nako. A moment later and Nako landed next to her leader. Show Rasa's kids to where they will be staying for the next few days. Of course Hokage-sama. Nako said as she led the kids out and Hiruzen activated the privacy seals. We may have a problem Hiruzen, Orochimaru paid me a visit a few days ago and asked me to join him in destroying Konoha. Rasa said. It had been two days since Naruto had passed the academy exams. It had spent the last two days showing Gaia and her siblings around Konoha and introducing the three Suna ninja to his three friends. What time Gaia wasn't spending with Naruto, she was spending with Ino, Satsuki, and Hanada doing what she described as girl stuff. Every time he asked her about it, she would always say that he would find out when the time was right. The next day was the day Naruto would meet his teammates and sensei but at the moment, he had other things on his mind. Currently, Naruto was walking down the streets to the Serutobi compound that Hiruzen had let Gaia and her family stay at along with him. Naruto was dressed in a white button-up shirt, a nice pair of black pants, black shoes, and a black jacket with an orange Uzumaki swirl near the wrist of both sleeves. He had spent hours the day before with the Sandame trying to find an outfit that the elderly Hokage deemed appropriate for the occasion. As he entered the compound and headed for the house that the Sabaku family was staying in, he took a couple of deep breaths to try and calm himself. He would be lying if he said he had never thought about his current situation before. Ever since Naruto and Gaia had met in Suna that day ten years ago, the two had formed a close bond. The two always smiled around each other and could always brighten up the other's day when they met or received letters from one another. Naruto always felt certain feelings when it had anything to do with Gaia. He knew what love was from the talks that his Gigi had with him over the years. He felt love from a lot of people, the Ichiraku duo, Hiruzen Gigi and Konohamaru, Makoto, and even some of the Anbu guards that were assigned to protect him when he was younger. He wasn't sure if the feeling he had was love or not, but he knew he felt something for the red-haired girl. As he approached the house, he took one final calming breath before knocking on the door. A few moments passed and the door was finally opened to reveal Rasa standing on the other side. Good evening Naruto, please come in. Gaia chain will be down shortly, she is just finishing getting ready. Rasa said as he closed the door behind the blonde. Good evening to you as well Rasa. Naruto said he bowed slightly to the man only to be bopped on the head. I have told you not to do that Naruto unless we are in the presence of others. Rasa said getting a nod from the blonde. Now before you and Gaia Chan leave for your date this evening, I just want to say one thing. My wife and I were close friends with your parents Naruto and I told your father that if anything ever happened to them I would do anything I could to help and protect you. However if I find out that you hurt Gaia in any way, no one will ever find your body. Rasa finished with a glare. Naruto started to speak but didn't get the chance to as Tamari spoke up coming down the stairs. I'm pretty sure Naruto would win too San. He does have four tailed beasts sealed inside him after all. Besides, do you honestly think he would hurt Gaia? Those two are the happiest when they are around each other. I understand that Tamari, but I don't want to see any of my children hurt in any way. Just keep her safe Naruto, that is all I ask. Rasa said as they heard footsteps coming down the stairs. Naruto looked to the top of the stairs to see what he could only describe as an angel walking down the stairs. Her red locks flowed down past her shoulders and curled slightly as it neared her waist. She had on a black single sleeve dress that covered her right arm and reached to her knees with a slit going up her left leg and stopping just above the knee while showing just a small part of the top of her chest. She had on a pair of black four inch heels and finished off the look with just a bit of makeup. As Gaia reached the bottom, she blushed not only because Naruto was staring at her, but also to how he looked. Compliment her baka. Tamari whispered to her fellow blonde as she slightly shoved him forward. You look beautiful this even my Suna Tenshi. Naruto said as he took her hand and kissed the back of it causing the red head to blush even more. 
Pretty sure Suna Tenshi is Sand Angel. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Th. Thank you Naruto-kun. You look handsome as well. Gaia said stuttering at first. The only people who had ever called her beautiful before were her family members. Hearing the blonde call her beautiful caused her to get warm inside and the feeling she often had when Naruto was around to return. Shall we be on our way then? Naruto asked as he held out his arm for her to take. After she took his arm, he opened the door and led them out. Don't keep her out too late Naruto. Rasa yelled from the doorway before closing it as the two made their way out of the compound. XXX the two genin walked down the streets of Konoha as most of the shops were closing up and people were heading home. The two were both nervous and neither knew what to say to the other so they walked enjoying the silence. Naruto led Gaia to the Golden Leaf, a restaurant that Hiruzen had gotten Naruto some reservations for. Arriving at the restaurant, Naruto held the door open for his date and walked in behind her. Walking up to the man standing behind the wooden podium, Naruto let a small smile at seeing a friend. Good evening and welcome to the Golden Leaf. The man said with a smile on his face as he looked at the two young ninja in front of him. Good evening Shingi-san, I didn't think you would be out here working seeing as how you own this place, Naruto replied. When Hiruzen came and asked for the reservations I decided to be the one to be out here tonight. Who's your friend Naruto-kun? The now named Shingi asked. This is Gaia-chan, my date for the evening. Gaia-chan, this is Shingi-san, an old friend of Gigi's. Naruto introduced the two as they bowed their heads at one another before Shingi picked up two menus. If you both would follow me please, Shingi said as led the two to the second floor. He walked over to a table that was sitting in the back corner near an open window allowing a gentle, warm breeze to blow through and was away from most of the other customers. Naruto pulled Gaia's seat out for her as she sat down before slightly pushing her in before taking his own seat. Shingi handed them both a menu before he left to check on other customers while they chose what they wanted. After about five minutes, Shingi walked back over to the two. So what would you like to order tonight? Shingi asked with a smile. Gaia was the first to answer as she looked up to elderly man. I would like the miso pollock with brown rice and a spring onion and cucumber salad please. All right, and what about you Naruto-kun? The man asked as he finished writing down Gaia's order. I would like the soy tuna with wasabi mash and brown rice please, Naruto said as the two handed their menus back. And what would you like to drink? Gaia looked to Naruto and slightly shrugged her shoulders. We'll take a bottle of mirin please Shingi-san. Of course Naruto-kun, I will be back with your food and drinks shortly," Shingi said as he bowed and left. As Shingi left, a silence fell over the two as each tried to find something to talk about. After a silent minute or two, Gaia spoke up. Naruto-kun, can I ask you a question? Gaia asked as she fidgeted with her fingers a bit. Of course Gaia-chan. Naruto replied with a smile noticing the girl's uneasiness. I know you want to rebuild your clan one day and I am aware of what that means. I understand that you would need more than one wife to rebuild your clan and I don't plan on stopping you from doing that. I was just wondering if I could have a say in the other girls that will be your wives one day. I just don't want someone to get near you that just wants to use you in some way. Gaia said looking at the blonde. Naruto smiled at the red-haired beauty as he reached over and took one of her hands in his and rubbed his thumb across the back of her hand. I don't mind at all Gaia-chan. They will have to get along with you just as well as they will with me. Naruto replied as Shingi walked over with their orders. Here is your food Naruto-kun, Gaia-chan. Shingi said as he placed the food and drinks on the table. Do you need anything else? No, that will be all for now. Thank you Shingi-san. Naruto replied as the older man bowed before leaving the two to enjoy their meal and time together. XXX Naruto and Gaia had spent the last two hours sitting and eating while talking amongst each other. Both teens were enjoying their time alone and were just getting ready to leave. As the two started to stand up from the table, a man slightly older than the two, wearing a chunin flak jacket, stopped next to their table. You know gorgeous, you could always leave the demon brat here and come with me, said the man getting a small growl out of Naruto. Get out of here Kamaru, we don't need your shit today. Naruto said through clenched teeth. I wasn't speaking to you demon, so shut up and let me talk to the babe here. The now named Kamaru replied as he turned back to Gaia. Naruto started to say something else but noticed the subtle shake of Gaia's head. Naruto saw her raise her hand as a small seal glowed for just a quick second as sand appeared in her face down palm. 
What was your name again Ninja-san? Gaia asked. Kamaru. How about we get out of here? Kamaru asked as he reached out and took her hand. Before he realized what was happening, a sickening crunch was heard as the man screamed out in pain as Gaia's sand crushed his hand. I am here on a date with Naruto-kun and you just interrupted it. Why would I want to go with someone like you? Get out of here or it will be more than just your hand I crush. Gaia said as she let the Chunin go and he ran out of the restaurant. Is everything okay? Shingi asked quickly coming over to the two. It was just Kamaru starting his shit again but Gaia Chan took take of it. We were just on our way out. Naruto said as he left a generous tip for the older man. Naruto held his arm out for Gaia and after she took it the two left the restaurant. XXX the two teens had been walking for about 10 minutes under the star-filled night sky. The two were laughing and simply enjoying the other's company. As they continued their walking, Naruto noticed Gaia shiver under the cool breeze of the night sky. Letting go of her hand, he took off his jacket and helped her slide into it. Gaia smiled at the blonde and started to retake his hand but noticed the look on his face. The look that told her he was talking to one of his sealed friends. Kit. There is a group of negative emotions headed this way. I would guess it as Kamaru and a group of others that do not care for you, Kurumi said. For once could these morons leave me alone? Especially while I'm with someone. Naruto replied before stepping in front of Gaia. Gaia started to ask what was wrong until a group of Chunin landed in front of them as a small group of civilians came around the corner with Kamaru in the lead. What do you want Kamaru? Naruto growled out. You and that little bitch of yours are going to die tonight. We'll kill you and then have some fun with her before we kill her as well. Kamaru said with a chuckle. Naruto felt his anger and chakra rise as the Chunin in front of him said those words. You could talk about him all you wanted, but when it came to those he cared about, that was crossing the line. And add in the fact that Kamaru said he was going to rape Gaia sent Naruto over the edge. He channeled chakra to the seal on his left wrist as Benahime appeared in his hand. Razor, Benahime. Naruto shouted as he drew his blade and swung it in an arc at the people in front of him. A wave of blue chakra launched out of the blade and moved towards the group. All but a few Chunin and the civilians managed to get out of the way. Those that didn't avoid the strike were cut in half as the chakra wave passed through them. The remaining five Chunin landed in front of Naruto and stared at the blonde as they each drew a weapon. Naruto made four seal less clones, three to help him and one to stay in front of Gaia even though he knew she could protect herself. The original Naruto activated his Sora Sharingan, before he ran forward. Time to see if Sensei's training has paid off. As Naruto neared the first Chunin, the Chunin went to slash at him but Naruto used the Shunshin to move past him. Naruto appeared behind one of the other Chunin and slashed him behind the knee before disappearing again. The others quickly stood with their backs to one another as they watched for Naruto. Naruto appeared in the middle of them with another Shunshin and slashed at two more of them before disappearing once again. Naruto reappeared once again and slashed at the fourth Chunin but wasn't quick enough to avoid the strike across his upper back. He vanished and appeared on the roof of a nearby store looking down at the group. I'll admit you got a lucky shot, but I think I will end this now. Naruto said as his three other clones surrounded the group preventing escape. You can't kill us demon. The council will have your head for this. Kamaru shouted in what Naruto knew was fear. I graduated the academy two days ago. Since I am now a shinobi of Konoha, I am allowed to act in self-defense. If that involves taking a life then so be it. You shouldn't have threatened Gaia Chan. Naruto said as he and the three clones held up Benahime. Crimson Princess of Binding. Naruto and the clones said as they slashed with their blades as the chakra flew off the blades and made a very small net that surrounded them on all four sides. The original Naruto jumped to the ground and walked over to the net. Fire playing Crimson Princess beaded mesh. Naruto said as he touched the tip of his blade to the net. Orbs of chakra appeared where the blade touched and began to spread around the net as Naruto moved back beside Gaia. Once the net was covered in chakra orbs, a small explosion rocked the area. As the dust cleared, there was just a small crater in the street where the bodies used to be. Naruto kun, are you alright? Gaia asked as she looked at the now healing cut on his back before she gasped at what she saw. Tears started to form in her eyes as she gently reached up and touched the word demon carved into Naruto's upper back. How? I thought the tailed beast could heal wounds, Gaia said. Normally they can, but even with having four sealed in me, they couldn't heal that one. 
Kurumi said it was because they poured salt in the wound as they did it and salt is really bad for them since they are technically demons. Naruto explained as his Gigi, Rasa, and some Anbu landed next to the two teens. Naruto-kun. What happened? Anbu Neko asked as she looked over the blonde with Hiruzen standing behind her and Rasa looking over Gaia. I'm alright Nei chan really. Kamaru tried to get Gaia to leave with him as we finished up our date but Gaia chan crushed his hand. He showed up here with some other Chunin and civilians and threatened to kill me, rape Gaia Chan, and then kill her too. I acted in self defense to protect myself and Gaia Chan and they ended up dead. Naruto explained as he looked to his grandfather. I am sorry your night was ruined, Naruto kun, but I am glad you both are safe. Perhaps you should head on home and get ready for tomorrow. Hiruzen said, getting a shake of the head from Naruto. Not yet, Gigi. I still need to walk Gaia Chan home and then I'll head home. Naruto said getting up and taking Gaia's hand as the two walked off leaving two smiling cages and an Anbu agent. XXX the rest of the walk was in a comfortable silence. Naruto walked Gaia up to the door before stopping on the porch. I am sorry about tonight Gaia-chan. Naruto said as he looked down. Gaia reached out and lifted his head with her hand as she stroked his whisker marks. Don't be Naruto-kun. Even with everything that happened, I still enjoyed the night out with you and look forward to more. Will you come and see us before we leave tomorrow? Gaia asked. Of course I will. Naruto replied as he reached up and took her hand in his. Get some rest and I will see you in the morning. Naruto said as he moved in and gave Gaia a small kiss on the cheek causing her face to turn the same color as her hair. Good night my Suna Tenshi. Naruto said before leaving in a swirl of leaves. Gaia walked in with a happy smile on her face and headed for her room. XXX Naruto stood with Hiruzen as they stood across from Rasa, his children, and his escort as they got ready to leave. Naruto had told the oldest two siblings and their father goodbye already and was walking up to Gaia. He didn't know why, but every time he looked at her, she would quickly turn away with a small blush. Walking up to the red head, Naruto took her hand before he started to speak. I had fun Gaia Chan, even if our night was ruined last night, Naruto said as the girl looked up at him. Like I said Naruto-kun, I am just glad you weren't hurt or anything. I had fun over the few days we were here as well. Next time I'm here we will have to do it again. Gaia replied getting a happy nod from the blonde. I am glad to see you both enjoyed yourselves. And you both may be spending more time with each other more than you think. Rasa said getting confused looks from the two. What do you mean too san? Gaia asked. After the Chunin exams that are coming up in a few months, your father has decided to transfer you to Konoha so you and Naruto-kun will have more time to work on things with the marriage contract. Hiruzen explained getting happy looks from the blonde and red head. Now I hate to rush this along but we need to be returning and Naruto-kun has the academy to get to for his team assignments, Rasa said. Gaia looked at the blonde with another blush on her face and quickly turned away. Tamari seeing this let out a small chuckle before moving next to her sister. Go for it Imoto. The worst you will do is daze him for a bit. Tamari whispered with another chuckle, getting a nod from Gaia. Gaia walked back to the blonde before looking up at him with a smile. I can't wait to see you again, Naruto kun. Take care, Gaia said. Naruto smiled and wrapped the girl in a hug. You too, Gaia chan. Naruto replied and went to walk over next to Hiruzen but stopped when Gaia grabbed his wrist. As Naruto looked at Gaia, his eyes widened as he felt a pair of soft lips pressed against his own. And just as quickly as they came, they were gone leaving a blushing and dazed blonde with a happy smile. I think you broke him. Konkuro laughed as they all watched the blonde. Neko, take Naruto-kun to his class before Aruka shows up please. The Hokage said as Neko moved forward and disappeared with Naruto. XXX about five minutes later and Naruto was finally over his dazed state and sitting with Ino, Hanada, and Sasuke, the four were talking and waiting for Aruka to show up. Who do you think will be on each team? Ino asked her friends. It's hard to say Ino chan. More than likely it will be you, Shika, and Choji in order to recreate the Ino Shika Cho team. As for the others, it is hard to say. Naruto replied as the door opened to reveal Aruka. The Chunin gave a short speech on how proud he was and the dangers that came with their jobs. After that, he started naming off teams and their Jonin sensei. Team 7 will be Sasuke Uchiha, Hanada Hayuga, and Naruto Uzumaki. Your Jonin sensei will be Shisui Uchiha. 
Iruka said getting surprised looks from Naruto and Sasuke. Team 8 will be Kiba Inazuka, Sakura Haruno, and Shino Aburame. Your Janin Sensei is Kuranaya Yuhi. Team 9 is still in rotation from last year so Team 10 will be Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara, and Choji Akamichi. Report back here in 3 hours to meet your sensei. Aruka said as the genin got up and left. Naruto, Hanada, and Sasuke were on their way to get something to eat until they had to be back to meet with their sensei. The group of three were heading to Ichiraku's ramen to get some food and talk with the Ichiraku duo as Naruto hadn't been around in a few days. As the three ninjas started to enter the ramen shop, they were stopped by a familiar voice. What are you three doing out of the academy so early? A female voice asked as the group turned around. Kaharu Ba Chan. The three said as they each moved to hug the elderly woman. We were just going to get something to eat while we wait for Shisui Sensei to meet with us. Would you like to join us? Naruto asked the woman who was like a grandmother to the three of them. I would like to Naruto kun, but I am currently on my way to another council meeting, maybe next time though. Congratulations on passing the academy and becoming Genin you three. I expect great things from you all and you better watch over these two young ladies Naruto kun. Kaharu said getting a nod from the blonde as she was one of the few to know Sasuke's true identity. After receiving another round of hugs from the three genin, Kaharu turned and continued on her way to the council meeting. After she was gone, the three kids made their way into the ramen shop in order to eat before meeting with Shisui. XXX Naruto, Hanada, and Sasuke sat in the back corner of the classroom as they waited for Shisui. All the teams had been back for about 10 minutes now and were all still waiting. After another five minutes, a kanai flew through an open window and landed in front, Sasuke, with a note attached. She took the note and read it before looking to her two teammates. Sensei is on the roof and wants us to meet him there. Sasuke, said getting nods from the Uzumaki and Hayuga. The three waved to Ino before they disappeared in a swirl of leaves shocking those remaining in the room except for Ino. Arriving on the roof, the three genin found Shisui leaning against the they walked over to the older Uchiha. He opened his eyes and looked to the three with a smile. First off, congrats on becoming Genin. Shisui said causing the three to smile and nods their heads in thanks. Second off, you're not Genin just yet. Shisui finished with a smirk seeing their confused faces. What do you mean Shisui sensei? Hinata asked. After Aruka announced your teams and you meet your sensei, you are supposed to introduce yourselves to your team and state things like your likes, dislikes, hobbies, and dreams for the future. However, since we already know each other from all the times you guys hung in the Uchiha compound with Satsuki, there is really no need for that. Then I tell you about your true genin test. Shisui explained getting more looks of confusion. The genin exams in the academy are only meant to show those who have the possibility of becoming genin. The genin instructors will then give you another test to see if they believe you will make it as genin. Shisui said before Naruto spoke up. If that's the case, then shouldn't you already know we have what it takes? Naruto asked. Sorry Naruto, this is Hokage-sama orders. All John and Sensei are required to do this test with their teams. This test has a 66% fail rate, meaning that out of the nine teams that passed to this point, only three will become an actual genin squad. Shisui finished explaining getting looks of shock from the three genin in front of him. So when do we take this test? Satsuki asked the older Uchiha. I will give it to you guys tomorrow. Be at training ground 7 at 7 a. M. Sharp. Shisui told them getting nods from the three. One more thing before you all go. Hokage-sama wants all the new genin to have one of these and to go to the Anbu headquarters every three months to update them with the new entries. Shisui explained while handing each of them a bingo book before he disappeared. Kit. Bring your teammates and young Ino over to your place tonight. We want you to introduce us to them and the four of us have something we want to give you for. Kurumi said through their mental link. Are you sure about this Kurumi-chan? I don't want them thinking I'm a freak or anything. I know they ain't like some of the others but you never know. Naruto replied. It will be fine Naruto-kun, trust us okay. Hoshimi replied to the blonde getting a mental nod back in response. Naruto-kun, are you okay? Hanada asked as she shook the blonde's shoulder snapping Naruto out of his talk. Yeah, sorry Hanada-chan. I guess I spaced out for a minute. If you two ain't busy later, can you bring Ino-chan and stop by my place for a bit? There's something I want to tell you three. 
Naruto told his teammates getting nods in return. Are you sure you're okay? Satsuki asked getting a nod and a smile from the blonde as the three left the roof. XXX After Naruto and his teammates left the academy rooftop, Naruto headed for the Hokage Tower. He wanted to ask the old man if it was alright for him to tell Satsuki, Ino, and Hanada about his sealed friends before he actually revealed anything. He knew the cage would more than likely allow him to do so as long as the three girls didn't reveal it to anyone else. Making to the cage tower, the blonde landed on the side of the building before walking towards the top. He made it to Hiruzen's office window, only to find his grandfather reading a little orange book. You know Gigi, you should find something better to do with your time. Naruto said shocking the man as he stepped through the open window. I'll do what I enjoy Naruto-kun, and you do what you enjoy. What can I help you with tonight? Hiruzen asked as the blonde sat down in front of him. Kurumi and the others want me to tell Ino, Satsuki, and Hanada about them being sealed within me. They also said they have a surprise for us becoming genin today and want to give it to us later after I tell them the truth. Naruto explained waiting for the Serutobi to answer him. Very well Naruto-kun, you can tell them but they must not repeat any of what you tell them to anyone else. Your friends have helped you through some hard times and I have no reason not to trust them. Hiruzen replied getting a small smile from the Uzumaki. Thanks Gigi, and I'll make sure they know not to say anything. Naruto said as he gave the old man a hug before heading back towards his place. XXX Naruto had just finished getting himself something to eat when he heard his door open and the girls let themselves in. Naruto walked into the living room area and smiled as each of the girls gave the blonde a hug. Naruto led the three back into the kitchen and the four sat down around the table as they waited to figure out what Naruto had called them over for. There are some things I need to tell you three, but before I can tell you all, I need you to promise that you won't speak about this to anyone other than me, Gigi, and Gaia-chan. It is an SS class secret and can't be revealed to anyone else at all. Naruto said in all seriousness. Naruto was never like this unless it was something extremely important to him. After receiving a nod from the three girls, he asked them to each hold hands and to clear their minds. As the girls followed his orders, the four genin were pulled into Naruto's mindscape. Ino, Hanada, and Satsuki opened their eyes to find themselves standing on top of a mountain overlooking a valley that had a large two-story house in the middle surrounded by a lake with the ground being covered by grass, trees, and other various plants and animals. The three turned to Naruto before Satsuki spoke. Where are we Naruto-kun? This is my mindscape girls, I brought you here to meet some of my friends, Naruto replied. The girls started to ask what he meant, but was silenced as they felt the ground shake and a loud roar echo through the sky. The three looked around for the sound until they saw three large figures coming running across the land at them and a fourth flying through the air. The four large creatures stopped as they reached the four kids before two more figures jumped off the back of the large wolf and the four creatures took on a human appearance. You all know of the two swords I use right? Naruto asked getting nods from the shocked girls. Well, this is Benahime and Zanjetsu, the spirits of my two blades. Benahime was wielded by my mother and Zanjetsu was wielded by my father before they died. Naruto explained as the three looked to him. But I thought you didn't know your parents Naruto-kun. Ino said as Naruto nodded before explaining. I learned who my parents were when I was five from these four here. Naruto said motioning towards the four-tailed beasts. My mother was Kashina Uzumaki Uchiha, daughter of Madara Uchiha, and the Red Death of Konoha. My father was Minato Namikaze, the Yellow Flash of Konoha or the fourth Hokage. Naruto explained shocking the three even further. So you were the son of our village's greatest Hokage and the clan heir to one of the greatest clans that ever existed. Hanada added in as she processed what she had just leaned. But if that's true, then why does no one know any of this? Why does part of the village hate you Naruto-kun? Satsuki asked. Part of that would be because of me and the other part would be because your Hokage wanted Naruto to live a normal life for as long as possible. Kurumi started explaining causing all eyes to fall on her. My name is Kurumi and I am the nine-tailed fox. I was sealed into Naruto-kun by his father and mother on the day he was born when a rogue Uchiha ripped me from his mother and put me under a genjutsu and caused me to attack the village. Kurumi and Naruto went on to explain how the other tailed beasts ended up being sealed and what had happened since his birth. They explained how they had helped Naruto by healing him and teaching him how to do stuff that would be needed throughout his life. During this time, 
The three girls learned that the tailed beasts weren't as bad as everyone made them out to be and were happy that their Naruto-kun had someone looking out for him at all times. Now on to the second reason why we had Naruto-kun bring you all here tonight. The four of you graduated the academy today and we have no doubt that you all will pass your true genin exams. The four of us each have our own summoning contract that we would like you four to sign. Heisai started explaining till Hikari took over. For Naruto, Kurumi would like you to sign the fox contract. For Satsuki, Heisai would like you to sign the dragon contract. Hoshimi would like for Ino to sign the wolf contract, and I would like for Hinata to sign my rabbit contract. Hikari finished as the four scrolls appeared before the four genin. The four kids had smiles on their faces as they bit their thumbs drawing blood, and signed the contracts. And one final thing, since Naruto-kun already has Benahime and Zanjetsu, we wanted to give you three a weapon as well to use. They are yours to use to help you in your ninja careers and to protect those important to you all. Hoshimi explained as three weapons appeared in front of the three females. In front of Satsuki, a metal pole appeared. The pole was about five feet long and was pitch black. At the top of the pole was a single red eye that seemed to stare into your very soul. A black, two and a half foot, curved blade was opposite the eye and had a razor sharp edge. Yami no Akumu, Nightmare of Darkness. Satsuki quietly said to herself as she held the weapon. In front of Hanada appeared a metal, snow white bow. At the tips of the curved ends were crescent moon shaped symbols. The bow had various designs of the moon at its different phases along the limbs of the bow. Beside the bow, was a quiver in the same bright white as the bow was colored with the same design. Bow of Tsukuyomi. Hanada whispered looking over her new weapon. In front of Ino appeared a dual set of weapons. Ino's weapons were a set of say as the weapons landed in her hands. The first had light purple cloth wrapped around the handle, with the metal blade, and two curved prongs a deep black with a purple line running down the middle. The second sai was the same except with the colors flipped. Hazuka and Torikabuto. Ino said with a smile. Torikabuto means wolfsbane and Hazuka means nightshade if I'm not mistaken. Ino deals with flowers so why not name them after two of the more poisonous ones. It will take you all some time, but train with your new weapons and master them. Use them to protect what you hold dear. It's getting late so why don't you all go on home and get ready for your test tomorrow. Kurumi said getting nods and thanks from everyone before the kids left. XXX back out in the real world. Nighttime had come and now the moon and stars were out shining bright. Naruto looked to the three girls across from him as they each had a smile at gaining a summoning contract along with a weapon to help protect themselves and others. Naruto gathered his sealing supplies before he drew a small seal on each of the girls' wrists as they gave him questioning looks. These are storage seals and they will hold just as much as a regular storage scroll. This way you will always have your weapons with you if you ever need them. Naruto explained as he led the three to the door. Now that you all know the truth about my heritage and my sealed friends, what do you all think of me? Naruto asked. He highly doubted that they saw him any differently, but he just wanted to be sure. You are still the same knucklehead that we grew up with and enjoy being around Naruto-kun. Just because you have Kurumi and the others sealed within you doesn't change how or what we think about you. Ino said as the Hanada and Satsuki nodded in agreement. Naruto let a small smile grace his face before it was replaced by a slightly shocked look and a blush. Each girl gave Naruto a hug and a kiss on the cheek before they opened the door and stepped out, and with a quick good night, they headed back towards their homes. Naruto made three seal less clones and sent them to follow the three just to be sure they made it home before he went and got ready to get some sleep. XXX Naruto, Hanada, and Satsuki stood in front of Shisui as they waited for the instructions to their test. Each of them had their own ideas of what the test could be and knew that no matter what it was, they would pass the test and become an official team. Shisui pulled two bells from his pocket and held them up to the genin. You three have till noon to get this two bells from me. Whichever one of you that doesn't get a bell will be sent back to the academy to start over. Shisui started explaining causing the three genin to give him determined looks. Seems like they may have already figured it out. These three may just be the greatest team Konoha has seen since the legendary Sanin. Shisui thought with a smirk. You will need to come at me with the intent to kill, or you will never even come close to passing this test. Your test starts now. Shisui finished as the three genin disappeared from sight. XXX in the surrounding forest, the three ninja met up and were trying to come up with a plan to beat their sensei. We don't stand a chance against sensei alone. 
We will have to work together and find a way to get close enough to grab the bells. Naruto said as he kept his senses up just in case Shisui came after them. Hanada Chan is the best at close range, so if we can get her close enough while keeping Sensei distracted, she should be able to grab the bells. The only problem in getting her close enough to do so, Satsuki said. What about your shadow clones, Naruto kun? I can henge into you and your clones and move in towards Sensei as you and Satsuki chan cover me from a distance. Hanada said getting smiles and nods from her teammates as the three set out to enact that plan. XXX Shisui was still waiting in the same spot he started in. He knew his students had already figured it out and were working on some way of getting the bells. He could have hunted them down and stopped them but he was wanting to see what they could come up with for facing an opponent stronger than themselves. After about 20 minutes of waiting, he caught movement out of the corner of eyes and turned to face his students. Naruto and about 30 clones burst forth out of the trees and ran for his sensei. The original Naruto stopped short of Shisui and allowed his clones to move in first. So it's just Naruto right now which means the girls are probably lying in wait somewhere. Guess I'll play along for now. Shisui thought to himself as he pulled his Tonto from his back and begun to defend himself from the clones. Once the clones were cut down to about 15 remaining, Naruto made more and had them rush in as well. Shisui, not wanting to deal with the clones anymore, channeled fire chakra through his blade setting it ablaze. Uchiha style, fire ring. Shisui said as he spun himself in a circle destroying all but seven clones. Gotta do better than just clones Naruto. Shisui said before he noticed Naruto's smirk. The Naruto in front of him erupted in smoke proving to be just a shadow clone as Shisui heard a shout behind him. Scream, Benahime. Shisui turned to see a large red wave of chakra coming at him and used a shunshin to avoid being hit. So you have your mother's blade do you? That's quite impressive, Shisui said. How did you know this was my mother's blade? Naruto asked. Your mother was my Jonin sensei, so I saw her use the blade more than once. Shisui said getting a nod from Naruto. Naruto disappeared in a shunshin and Shisui quickly brought up his tanto to block the strike. As soon as the blades clashed, Naruto grabbed Shisui's free wrist. Now Satsuki Chan. Naruto yelled causing Shisui's eyes to widen when he noticed a clone erupting in smoke to reveal Satsuki making hand signs. Fire style, fireball jutsu. A large fireball was fired off towards her teammate and sensei. Naruto waited till the fireball got closer before he let go and vanished in a shunshin. Did that get him? Satsuki asked as Naruto landed beside her. Before Naruto could answer, Shisui appeared a few feet from them with his tanto on fire. Uchiha style, halo dance. Shisui swung his blade sending blades of fire flying at the two genin. Naruto jumped in front of Satsuki as he channeled wind chakra into Benahime. Windscar. Naruto launched a wave of wind at the fire blades and sliced right through them. Naruto resealed his sword as he started making hand signs as Satsuki made her own set of hand signs. Fire style. Flame Bomb, Wind Style, Great Breakthrough. The two jutsu were released and combined creating a much large flame bomb that was fired at Shisui. The Jonin avoided the attack and turned to look back at the two other Uchiha only to see them smirking. Quickly turning around, he was met with another clone. What he noticed about this clone was that it was using the gentle fist. As he avoided each strike, he managed to land a hit on the clone that dispelled the henge to reveal Hanada as she continued on the attack. He brought his arms up to guard against Hinata's next attack but it never came. Dropping his arms slightly, he saw Naruto standing there with his arm pulled back. Naruto quickly reached out to grab the bells before pushing his hand forward and releasing his Gale Beast palm which shoved Shisui back. Shisui stood up straight and looked at his three genin with a smile on his face. So who gets the bells? Naruto handed the bells to Hinata and Satsuki who then threw them to Shisui. We're a team sensei, pass or fail. We do it together. Satsuki said getting nods from Naruto and Hanada. Congratulations, we are now officially Team 7. XXX it had been two months since Team 7 had started taking missions. Two months of D-rank missions, if you could even call them that. Naruto and his team had just returned Tora for what seemed like the 50th time that week. They were currently waiting on their next mission when an Anbu agent landed next to the Hokage and talked to him quietly for a few moments. Shisui. Do you think your team is ready for a higher ranking mission? Hiruzen asked causing the four to go serious all of a sudden. I do believe that they can handle a higher mission than D rank, 
Do you need something of us Hokage-sama? Shisui asked. Team 10 is escorting a client back to Wave Country and it would seem he lied about the mission. Asuma and his team have decided to continue on with the mission as long as they have some backup. I would normally send some Anbu for this but most of my agents are out on missions or need for Konoha's protection. Will you accept this mission and back up Team 10? Asked the cage. Shisui looked to his genin as they nodded and he looked back to his leader. Of course Hokage-sama. They left about three hours ago moving at civilian speed. You should be able to meet up with them before they reach the border if you leave shortly. I would suggest packing for at least a month, replied the cage. You heard Hokage-sama, pack for a month and meet in the village gates in ten minutes. Dismissed. Shisui said as the three nodded before leaving. A group of eight people were hopping through the trees as they made their way towards wave country. This group consisted of Naruto, Satsuki, Hanada, and Shisui. The other four people were the three genin's weapons. About a month into their training with their new weapons, and Naruto training more with Benahime and Zanjetsu, the group discovered that their weapons could take on a human form. They could transform parts of their body into their respective weapon and were excellent in taijutsu. The tailed beasts had told them that once they trained more, the weapons would be able to use jutsu with the same affinity as their masters. Two of these other four people were Benahime and Zanjetsu themselves. If you don't remember what they look like, go back to chapter 2. The next person was a man standing at an even six feet tall, had short black hair, dark brown eyes, and was dressed in a black long sleeve shirt, black anbu pants, and black ninja sandals. This was Yami, Satsuki's scythe. The next was a woman standing at about five feet and seven inches. She was dressed in a pure white kimono with blue ninja sandals that stopped just below her knees. She had white hair that reached down to her waist and bright hazel eyes. This was Suku, Hanada's bow. Shisui was surprised at first about their weapons being able to transform, but he didn't think about it too much when ninjas used animals that could speak and use jutsus just like the ninja. He had to admit though, nothing was ever dull with this new genin team. So what all will we do on this mission sensei? Satsuki asked as they continued jumping through the trees. We are to help Asuma's team escort the client back to the village and protect him while he finishes the bridge he is working on. During the time we are in wave, we are also to find the person responsible for the country's bad condition and eliminate him. Shisui explained getting nods from the group. Sensei, we are coming up on team Asuma, I sense their chakra. Naruto spoke up. Shisui gave a small nod and the three genin gave their weapons a small nod before the weapons changed back into their weapon forms and the genin strapped them on their backs. Satsuki, put your henge back up for now, Shisui said getting a nod from the girl. After a few more moments of tree hopping, Shisui and his team came up on Asuma's group. Along with Asuma and his three genin, there were three other people. The first was an older man with a straw hat and a bottle of sake in his hand. The next two were females and were twins. These two females were Tori and Zuki, Ino's say. Tori and Zuki stood at five feet and five inches. Tori wore a light purple kipau that stopped just above her knees with black shorts on underneath, while Zuki had a black kipau with purple shorts. They both had long flowing brown hair that stopped just short of their ass along with black ninja sandals. So my old man sent your team as back up. Nice to have you all along. Asuma said as he let out a puff of smoke from the cigarette he was smoking. Yes and we will follow your lead Asuma. Shisui replied getting nods of agreement from his genin. We were just getting ready to cross over the river here and then it's about a five mile hike to the town and then another mile to Tazuna's place. Asuma replied turning to the older man. There isn't enough room in the boat for all of us I'm afraid. Tazuna said before Shisui spoke up. My team and I can walk along by the boat to provide protection if needed. We will be fine to Zuna San. Shisui replied as Ino's weapons returned to her hips and the group continued on their way. After about ten minutes of walking across the water, the group finally made it to the other side and started heading for the small town of the Land of Waves. The group had been walking for about a mile now when a thick fog suddenly set in. As the fog got thicker, the ninja continued on their way while constantly checking their surroundings. XXX two figures stood high in the trees looking down at the group walking below them. We didn't count on there being two teams to deal with Zabuza Sama. Are we still going to go through with this? asked the shorter one. We need the money Haku. The sooner we get this done, the sooner we can be on our way. I will take out the two Jonin first and let a water clone deal with the Genin. 
If they prove to be a bigger pain than I think, then move in and finish them. Zabuza said getting a nod from the young girl as she placed her mask on and disappeared. XXX, Naruto-kun, you can feel that too right? Kurumi asked her container. Yeah, we're being watched. I can sense a lot of chakra in this fog which means this could be the hidden mist jutsu that Kiri is famous for. But with Kiri being in their civil war right now, it is more than likely a rogue ninja. I also sense two different chakra signatures. There's the one who is causing all this fog, and then a smaller one not too far away but I can't get a lock on their location. Naruto replied before he picked up a sound coming through the fog with his enhanced hearing. Get down. Naruto yelled as he grabbed Hanada and pulled her to the ground. Sasuke pulled Ino down with him, and Shikamaru and Choji pulled Tazuna to the ground. Asuma and Shisui were more concerned that their genin were alright, and didn't have time to dodge. They both brought up a kanai to deflect the large blade but both Jonin were knocked back into the water. Laughter was heard through the fog as it slowly began to disappear to reveal Asuma and Shisui trapped in two water prisons held by Zabuza with another copy standing a few feet in front of him. To think I was worried you all would put up more of a fight. Take Tazuna and get out of here now, that's an order. You guys can't fight against Zabuza. Asuma shouted before Naruto spoke up. We know Asuma sensei, he is an A rank missing nin and a master at the silent killing technique. But we can't just leave you two trapped in there and run away. Even if we did, Zabuza would just hunt us down later. Naruto stated before turning to Ino and her team. You three protect Tazuna, we'll get Asuma sensei and Shisui sensei. Naruto said getting a nod from his fellow blonde. When you get the shot Hanada chan, take it. Let's go, Sasuke, Naruto said as the two started going through hand signs. You won't even be able to get past my clone let alone get to me. Zabuza laughed. Fire style. Great dragon fire jutsu. Naruto and Sasuke both launched a massive ball of fire at the clone that took the shape of a dragon's head. Naruto channeled chakra to his legs and rushed behind the fire dragon towards Zabuza. Zabuza surrounded himself with water which cancelled out the fire. He saw Naruto rushing him and went to slice him in half, but Naruto suddenly vanished. Sasuke launched a barrage of kanai at Zabuza as he managed to deflect them all. Naruto reappeared behind him and grabbed a kanai out of midair and started to slash at the clone before jumping back a bit. Sasuke! Naruto shouted as the two ran at the clone, each with a kanai in hand, and sliced through the clone causing it to dispel. Zabuza was so distracted by the two genin that he didn't notice the arrow flying at him until the last minute and had to jump back to avoid it which caused the water prisons to be undone. Nice work you guys. Shisui said as he and Asuma stood and faced the missing ninja. Knowing he was outmatched, Zabuza did the smart thing and jumped into the trees. Enjoy your victory while you can, I will kill the bridge builder. With that, Zabuza left. After making sure everyone was okay, the group continued their walk into the town. XXX as the group of ninja and one civilian made it into the town, the genin's mood changed to one of anger. Looking around at all the homeless people, the run-down buildings, and the kids looking for food anywhere they could cause the genins to become even angrier with the way Gato was treating everyone. The two Janin weren't bothered as much having seen this type of thing many times before. Naruto continued to look around the place as the group continued on their way towards Tazuna's home. During the walk through town, Naruto was reaching out with his senses just in case Gato had any more ninja waiting for them. As they neared the end of the town, a mass of negative emotions was sensed by the blonde. Can you sense exactly where that is coming from Kurumi-chan? Naruto mentally asked as he looked around the area. Next alley on the right Naruto-kun. Kurumi replied getting a nod from the blonde as he took off getting looks of confusion his fellow ninja. Naruto stopped at the entrance of the alley and what he saw made his blood boil. Two thugs had a blue-haired woman in a pink shirt and blue skirt pinned to an old table. One of the thugs had his hand over her mouth to keep her from screaming as the two thugs looked her over. Naruto made a single shadow clone as they both unsealed one of his blades. The clone unsealed Benahime and Naruto himself unsealed Zanjetsu. The clone jumped to the roof as Naruto walked down the alley towards the two thugs and the Konoha group stopped moving and Shisui moved to see what was going on. Seeing what was happening, Shisui decided to let Naruto take care of and only jump in if he needed to, this would give the young blonde the chance to take his first kill and have time to deal with it. Naruto stopped a few feet from the two thugs before speaking. Let the woman go and mess with someone who can fight back. 
Naruto said causing the two thugs to spin around and draw their swords. Beat it kid, this doesn't concern you, one of the thugs said. One of the biggest things I can't stand are rapist. For what you try to do to this woman, you both will die. Naruto said as the other thugs started to move forward. Naruto looked to the woman with a gentle look on his face. Please close your eyes, you don't need to see this. Naruto said as the woman did as told. Naruto rushed forward and vanished from sight before reappearing behind one of the thugs. A moment later, the man's head fell from his body and hit the ground. The other thug growled at Naruto, but before he could move, the clone appeared behind him with his blade sticking through his chest. The clone then pulled the blade from the man and shoved him to the ground next to his dead friend. Naruto raised his hand as a small ball of crimson flames appeared and he held his hand at the two thugs. Foxfire. Naruto said as the ball of flame surrounded the two bodies before burning them nothing but ash. A moment later and Shisui appeared. You okay Naruto? You need to talk about it or anything. It isn't my first kill sensei. Gigi wanted me to be ready for the ninja life so he had me kill one of the prisoners back in Konoha who was set to be executed a few years back. Naruto explained getting a nod from Shisui before Naruto was tackled in a hug. Thank you so much for saving me young man. The woman cried as she hugged the blonde. There is no need to thank me. I just did what everyone else would have done. Come on, let's get out of this alley. Naruto said as the three walked out. As they made it back to the street, Tizuna saw the woman and ran to her before wrapping her in a hug. After a moment of explanation, the group found out that Naruto had just saved Tizuna's daughter Tsunami. Asuma and Shisui spoke by themselves for a few minutes before turning back to the genin. Shisui and I will escort these two back home. You all split up in groups, Choji and Shikamaru, Hanada and Naruto, Sasuke and Ino, and look around town and find any information you can about Gato from the civilians, listening in on his thugs, or any way you can and meet back at Tizuna's place by sunset. Asuma explained getting nods from the genin before they split up. XXX Naruto and Hanada stood on the roof of one of the few stores in the town as they looked over the place. It had been a few hours since their sensei left them to gather information and so far they had found nothing useful. They were on their way to Tizuna's place to meet up with the rest of their group and make a plan for protecting Tizuna and freeing Wave from Gato. As they started to leave, Naruto sensed a couple chakra signatures that put him on edge. What is that? It feels like two more tailed beast chakras. Naruto thought as he looked to see a group of Kumo ninja. One was a well-developed blonde female with blue eyes and one was a spiky red-headed female with amber eyes. The two that caught Naruto's attention were the last two. The first was a blonde female that stood about 5 foot, 5 inches. She had long blonde hair that reached just above her waistline and was done in a braided ponytail. She had on a purple shirt, black anbu-styled pants, and black ninja sandals. The next was a taller white-haired man with dark skin that stood close to six feet tall and was wearing a pair of sunglasses. He had seven swords strapped to his back, a white, one-shoulder flak jacket, and a pair of grey pants with black ninja sandals. The blonde holds my youngest sister Matabi, the two-tailed demon cat. The man houses my brother Gyuki, the eight-tailed giant ox. Kurumi explained getting a nod from Naruto. Hanada saw the group Naruto was staring at and took a step back. Ever since her attempted kidnapping when she was younger, she was afraid of Kumo Ninja. Kumo and Konoha had discussed what happened and found out that the Rakage had no idea who had ordered the kidnapping but had taken care of things with his counsel. Naruto turned to her and placed a comforting hand on her shoulder. It's okay Hanada-chan, I will be with you and won't let anything happen. Naruto told her with a smile getting a nod from the girl as both jumped down and landed in front of the group. The Kumo ninja were immediately on guard but stopped when Naruto spoke. Matabi, Yuki, it's been a while. How do you know those names? Asked the man with narrowed eyes behind his glasses. The oldest, Kurumi, is with me. Naruto said with a smile getting wide-eyed looks from the two as Naruto held up two fists. Wanna chat? The two ninja stepped forward and bumped fist with Naruto as their surroundings changed to the field Naruto had created for Kurumi and the others. Naruto stepped back from the ninja as the four-tailed beasts appeared behind him. The name's Naruto Uzumaki. The blonde girl spoke up first. I'm Yugito Ni and this is Matabi. Yugito said with a smile. Don't expect Killer B to rap. I can't rap so neither will he. Name's Killer B and this Gyuki. 
B said with a wave of his hand. If you don't mind me asking, what are you all doing in wave? Naruto asked. The other blonde on my team has a brother who was captured by some of Gado's employees. We are just trying to find him and rescue him. B explained after thinking about if he should tell him or not. There are two teams here from Konoha. We are protecting the bridge builder while he finishes his bridge and take Gado out in the process. If we hear anything about your friend, I will be sure to let you know. Naruto replied getting nods from the other two. They small group spent the next few minutes explaining to Naruto what Atsui looked like, allowing the tailed beast to catch up and just friendly talking. After they were done, Naruto broke the connection and bid the Kumo ninja goodbye as he and Hanada headed for Tazuna's place. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.